When man first started to travel from place to place over this great round world of ours, thousands of years ago, he used to draw little pictures of the routes he had taken so that he could show his friends where he had been. In those days, he couldn't travel very far, and it was quite easy to draw a picture of his journey. But today, when we can go around the whole wide world, it is much more difficult to map out a picture of our travels. Our picture must be flat while our world is round. Round like a grapefruit. And how could we get a grapefruit flat? With a rolling pin, we could try to squash it. This one is empty, so it won't squirt juice into your eyes. But this method is much too clumsy. It doesn't make a good flat picture at all, and it would never turn out the same way twice. So let's take another one and try again. This time we will follow a plan and cut it up into rings as carefully as we can. First the top half around the North Pole, and then near the equator. Then the bottom half. Down to the South Pole. And then once from the North Pole, around to the South Pole. We will peel it and lay the strips out flat. We don't need the inside and we will turn over each strip so that we can see what is on the other side. Here is a picture of the world that is really flat, but as you can see, it has a lot of gaps in it. So let's place a piece of frosted celluloid on top of the strips and trace off what we see beneath, filling up the gaps so that we can get a better idea of what it is really like. Around the edges over the gaps, the countries are all out of shape. But in the middle, we have a good picture of Europe and Africa. So let's try moving the strips so that they come together on the right-hand side. And put on a piece of celluloid again and make a tracing. Australia and Asia are fine now, but North and South America are more out of shape than ever. If we arrange the strips in a different way, we get a good picture of the Americas, but a poor picture of the rest of the world. Like all the tracings we have made, this one is good in one part only, and all out of shape in the other parts. We have not been very successful in getting a good picture of the whole world. So let's start all over again, this time using a turnip. It too is the same shape as the world. We will cut it in half to begin with. Now at least we can see both sides at the same time. So let's cut the halves again. This is a little better. Let's do it once more. This is getting flatter, so let's do it again.
Now we can wrap a piece of celluloid around this and take some paint and a brush and trace off what we see under the celluloid. Let's start with North America. Here is Alaska, Hudson Bay, Quebec, the Maritime Provinces, Florida, and Mexico. And Europe, Spain, France, Denmark, and Scandinavia. And Africa. Madagascar and the Aleutian Islands and finally Asia. China, Thailand, New Guinea and Australia. This tracing is much like the well-known Mercator map, which you will find in almost every atlas. You can see it is accurate all along the equator, just like it is on the sections of our turnip. But the north and south poles have now become long, straight lines, each one as long as the equator. If you want to travel along the equator, this map will serve you very well. But if you set out for the south pole, you will never be able to find it. And it would be almost impossible to pilot an aeroplane over the North Pole with only a map like this to guide you. So let's rearrange the pieces in a circle around the North Pole and see if we can get a better map of the top of the world. We can flatten the pieces out a little more first. Our celluloid and trading will make it clearer. The South goes way out of shape but the north is fine. Every time we get a correct drawing for one part, all the other parts are out of shape. Here only Asia is the right shape. And North and South America are all wrong. Here the Americas are fine, but all the rest is wrong. Here the equator is right, but the North and South Poles are stretched out into long straight lines. And here is a correct picture of the North Pole, but the South Pole has become a huge circle. In fact, it is impossible to show the whole world accurately on a flat map. We can only draw a true picture of one small part at a time. And that is why the globe is still the only correct way to show the whole world.